In this video, we're going to look at line shapes. And we have here data which include two peaks, one of which is from a sulfur 2S, the other is from a sulfur 2P. The 2S is a single peak and is very Lorentzian in shape, whereas the doublet is constructed from two peaks. And these are less Lorentzian, and they come as a pair of peaks where the ratio of these peaks ought to be 2 to 1 because of the, the relationship of areas within a doublet with P symmetry. We're going to focus on the LA line shape in this video. And these peaks are particularly useful because we have here a Lorentzian like line shape, and the LA line shape in its simplest form is just a pure Lorentzian. So let's create a pure Lorentzian on these data. So the first thing we need to do is produce a background on top of which the photoemission peak will sit. So we've used a, a U2 Tugar background and I'm going to create a line shape. Now there's no element transition in these data so it's just used wide for the element and I'm going to make that sulfur 2S so I'm going to use the hash to bring in the line shape from the element library, which has previously been defined as an LA line shape. However, the parameters aren't suitable for the, these data because we have values which deviate from a Lorentzian and there's a significant Gaussian involved here. So I'm going to change these values to be LA1, 0. The 0 means no Gaussian and the 1 means a pure Lorentzian. So when I press return on this and say fit we get a fit to the data which is fairly reasonable but you can see that the background here and the line shape don't agree so what I will do is I will introduce a Gaussian component and in doing so you can see the result is that the peak maximum has adjusted and so you can see the residual change here but the background now fits slightly better and after I do a fit we end up with a better residual and overall better approximation to these data. Now I'll do one other thing here because a Lorentzian line shape extends beyond the region and so what I need to do is make a small adjustment to the offset of the background where it ties to the data I'm using the mouse to do this and then I press fit again and I end up with a reasonable fit to these data. So we have now got a Lorentzian with a, a convolution with a Gaussian that approximates this singlet peak. Now let us compare that to what happens when we do the same exercise looking at the doublet. So I'm going to introduce again the a background and what I'll do is I will enter here the names and get the library to load the appropriate RSFs. So in principle what we should have if we have created a, a good quantification for these data because they're both from sulfur different photo emission peaks but when scaled by the appropriate relative sensitivity factors we ought to have the ratio of one to one in terms of the concentration here. So it's not too far off. And the reason it's not too far off is that we've got transmission function correction here. That's active. We're using an escape depth correction that's based on the effective attenuation length. And it's got angular distribution correction using an angle of 45 degrees be between the X-ray source and the axis of the analyzer. So we would expect to get fairly close to the expected ratio of one to one. So that's the region. Now we've got a peak model that has already got the sulfur 2s defined in terms of Lorentzian. So we now need to have to set two more component peaks for this doublet. And again I'm going to have to use the library to update because we don't have the element transition information in this FAMAS block. It says it's wide because it includes more than just the sulfur. It's got tungsten as well. So let's just adjust this peak and we'll copy and paste that peak. 
and move and say fit. So now we've got again a pair of peaks and these should be in the ratio of two to one. Let's first of all use the same line shape that was used for the S just to illustrate that the sulfur 2P has a different line shape. It's not Lorentzian. It clearly has more signal to the wings than in the Lorentzian peak than, you would ex than the data itself. So we need to do something about that and we can do that by adjusting the shape that is associated with the Lorentzian. So we've used the generalized Lorentzian to increase the value for this particular peak and you can see how it's fitting here now. And if I just make myself a constant index for the two doublet and I'll set that to zero for the, for the sulfur 2s so that I can use a hash here to transfer a line shape from the one peak in this doublet to the other one and it's matching the component index here so that this line shape only updates this one here because this has a value of zero that one was left as it was which is what we needed so we'll fit that one and now we end up with a, a fit and the ratio of these peaks is not dissimilar from the from the regions 